The ACU women's basketball team earned two big victories this week and looked to clinch a first round bye in the Southland Conference Tournament. I'm Max Preston. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll look back at those two wins last week and ahead to this final week of the regular season. This is the Julie Good Enough Show. Welcome to this week's episode of the Julie Good Enough Show. From the JMC Network Studios at Abilene Christian University, I'm Grant Boone, alongside ACU Journalism Major Max Preston and the head coach of the ACU women's basketball team, Julie Good Enough. The final week of the regular season is here. Just two games left for the Wildcats, who remain in position for a first-round bye in the Southland Conference Tournament after two more wins last week. Now 19-8 overall, 12-4 in the league. Coach, as someone who preaches Control the controllables, one of your great sayings. I imagine you love a week like this. Doesn't matter what anyone else right. does. It's in your hands to get that first round by. Absolutely, and took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. Uh, we'll be talking about that today in practice. And um, another one of my favorite phrases is to be where your feet are. You know, and let's let's enjoy the process of preparing for our last two regular season games. Let's, you know, come into practice today with just uh, really like a, a you know, concentrated effort, being focused on the task at hand and just controlling what we can control to get ready for some more wins this week. So it's senior day Saturday for both teams, but you only have one senior, Sarah Williamson, and you're calling it Sarah Day. <laughs> I know she's been special to you and her teammates over her four-year career. So how emotional will this Saturday be for you and everyone else as you celebrate her final home game? Uh, you know, it's just going to be an exciting celebration of Sarah. And, and obviously there's some emotions involved in, uh, you know, senior day and, um, Sarah's been here through uh, the, the transition and, you know, she was here with that uh, senior class that led us through a lot of wins and she learned a lot um, by being a reserve player for us her first two years and then as a junior or senior, she's risen to the occasion. She's become an everyday starter for us and so she's played a lot of different roles on our team. Uh, she's comic relief. Um, <laughs> she's kind of the... the you know, the, the center of the party a lot of times um, in group settings. And so she brings a lot to our team that fans don't know about, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. I mean, she's, she's kind of our life and she's a big jokester. She laughs a lot. Um, you know, she kind of gets us cracking up about things. And so we, we'll miss her presence both on and off the court. Well, we're going to preview both games this week a little bit later. But next, a look back at yet another undefeated week for the Wildcats. This is the Julie Good Enough Show. For the sixth time during this conference season, the ACU women's basketball team went unbeaten for an entire week, beginning Wednesday night at home with a runaway win against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, 72-55 the final. The Islanders didn't suit up. They're two leading scorers because of a violation of team rules. This happens from time to time with different teams. When did you realize that they weren't going to have the full complement? And, and how much of a challenge is it? Do you, do you have to adjust the way you coach when you see who they are putting on the floor? Uh, you know, it kind of throws you for a loop when they don't show up with the people that you've been talking about all week. And they're, you know, players that maybe aren't even on your scouting report are going to have to play some minutes now. Um, but I found out about an hour before the game. And so we made the adjustments with our starting lineup and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, it just it's, it's kind of interesting when, uh, you know, players are injured or sick, uh, sure. you know, and, and you have different lineups out on the floor that you have to face. But we try to do a good job talking about, you know, nine and ten players when we do our scouting report, just in case things like that happen. Yeah, and you do quite a good job in that game. In the second half, you never let the Islanders come within less than 12. You know, how nice is it being in such a competitive time of the year to keep a lead like this? And do you have to adjust in any way coaching-wise in this kind of game? Uh, Wednesday night was a great game from our players. Um, I, I thought they did a really nice job sharing the ball. We had a ton of assists, um, did a really good job blocking out and rebounding. Um, defensively, we, I think, showed some signs of improvement. Uh, we emphasized defense a lot on Monday and Tuesday, and um, our, our players played a really complete game on Wednesday night. So it was a really good to see that. And I think that we've been playing some of our best basketball leading up to that Wednesday night game. And so, um, you know, I, I think our players are doing a really nice job making changes and um, 
according to our scout and, and according to the opponent. So good overall game on Wednesday night. That was a fourth straight win for your team. Then you go on the road Friday against Central Arkansas, starring in your own remake of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> You wound up not flying as you originally had scheduled, and then you had a bus mishap and didn't get into Conway until 8 o'clock on Friday night. Then the game, before it even tips off, it, you're down one nothing because of a, an administrative technical foul. The lineup wasn't submitted on time. And yet with all of that, with Central Arkansas fighting for the last spot in Katie, you battled into the final buzzer, and you get a Maddie Miller bucket with 2.6 seconds left to beat those Sugar Bears 67-65. It was a chaotic 36 hours, but once the game got going, it felt to me kind of like old times with Central Arkansas. What was it like there on the bench against a team that you battled so many years? Well, you know, it was an interesting trip there, like you alluded to, and uh, it makes me, you know, want to hit myself for saying control the controllables because, you know, you have to live it out in that moment, and, you know, sometimes travel gets a little bit out of whack, and you just have to control what you can control. Uh, you know, we tried to make light of the difficult journey to Central Arkansas, but I know it was hard for our players, and um, I can't sleep on the bus, so I'm awake the whole time. Well, they can sleep, and they sleep basically, you know, uh, who knows, eight yeah. hours on Friday, which is not a normal day for them. And so we started the game out on Saturday, just what I thought pretty deadheaded, and me included, just a little bit foggy mentally, and Central Arkansas was not, though. I mean, they were hitting on all cylinders. Uh, they were shorthanded. One of their uh, post players that had the flu that day didn't play. They've been without Taylor Sells, who's arguably their second best player on the team. She's out with an injury, and so they were a little shorthanded. We were not shorthanded, but we were just slow about re responding and reacting. And Central played a really, really good game. And um, you know, I, I was really aggravated with our team at halftime, and might have raised my voice a little bit in the locker room. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just a really heated battle throughout the second half as well, like you would expect against a very well-coached Central Arkansas team. But, you know, at the end of the game, we pull out the win. And, you know, I tell our team in the locker room, like, I know I was trying to make light of yesterday, and we were trying to act like it was pretty comical, all the distractions that we had on Friday. But I know that that was a reason why we were, you know, not quite up to snuff, especially mentally, I think, mm -hmm. just not thinking very sharp, to the point that I will admit, I thought Maddie got an offensive rebound and put it back in. From my viewpoint, we ran a play for Bree Wright to take a shot, and and they play defense just like we thought we were. I'm looking at the rim thinking Bree's shooting it. All of a sudden, Maddie catches the ball above her head, and she puts a shot. In. I, I thought it was offensive rebound put back. So I was out of the game, too. It was like the game was going too fast for our minds to keep up with. It was so crazy. And then after the game, I noticed she doesn't have a rebound. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So, you know, and then they were like, no, we back our cut. And I'm like, so I'm out of it just like the players are. You know, it was just it's kind of a crazy game. But one of those where, um, you know, you just, just persevere. Persevere, per persevere through the mistakes we're making, the mistakes I'm making. Um, and just, you know, don't let any obstacle get in your way and prevent you from reaching your goal. And that's just to win the ball game, one point, three points, whatever. Um, so I was really, really proud of our team for the way they, they just persevered through the challenges that we had. Yeah, so that's the big play in the game, the pass from Bree to Maddie Miller. puts you up two points, and you eventually win the game. But talking about Maddie, this year she's come off the bench and played a considerable amount of minutes as a freshman. But after seeing that play, you don't really think of her or, you know, you don't really see her as a first-year player coming through like that. So, to you know, with this play, what does that say about her as a player to you? We know as a coach you have all these – plays, you know, all these quick hitters and you run this offense and, um, you know, you want the players to, to execute and, you know, there's a reason why we called the set play that we called at the end of the game. We want the ball in Bree's hands and she can score. She's got a couple of teammates that, that we put in scoring positions. But at the, at the end of the day, like, you have to have players just make plays. And, you know, we talk to our players all the time about if you're a defender, if, if they're over denying or if they take their eyes off of you, you backdoor cut. It's, it's instant. And that's what Maddie did. That had nothing to do with the set play that we called. But she saw that her player was engaged with Bree. She backdoor cuts and then Bree are – you know, point guard who, who can make passes like that, she hits her. And so that was just a huge uh, play of just Maddie being a basketball player. And uh, Maddie had just barely gone in the game because 
Dominique, who played this tremendous game, had literally played herself to exhaustion. And so we took her out, mm -hmm. and you don't want to take her out. You know, they've got like a minute left in the game, and she's playing this awesome game. But she's literally exhausted. So we take her out, and we have Maddie in there because – Dom had done everything she could do for us, and Maddie had to make a play right then, and she did it. So uh, it shows a lot of growth on her part mm -hmm. and, and her just being coachable and, you know, little things that we talk about along the way, like, hey, if they turn your back, to you, if your defender turns their back to you, you backdoor cut in any situation, and she did that, and it ends Absolutely. up being the game winner for us. Nope. Well, Coach, it was a wild ending and a, a, a great week for your team. You won two games, and now in this hotly contested race for a first-round tournament by the Wildcats have two more big games tied for third place. We will preview those games in a moment. This is the Julie Goodenough Show. The lone senior of the ACU women's basketball team, Sarah Williamson, plays her final game Saturday against Incarnate Word. Our very own Owen Simpson sat down to talk with Williamson about her senior season. Sarah, you're the only senior on your squad, so you've seen how the team has improved over the years. What are some of your most memorable moments as a Wildcat? Honestly, uh, winning my very first conference championship my freshman year was huge. Um, coming into it straight out of high school, I didn't think that right off the bat I'd win a conference, conference championship, but we did. And then we followed that up my next season with another ring. And so those were just two of the greatest moments. And then we went to the WNIT, were successful in the first round, and just did good with that. And now here you are sitting at third overall in the conference with that tournament looming. How exciting is this for you and your team? It's very exciting. We know that we have a very good chance to win the conference tournament. We're super excited about it, and we're just really excited to just pave our way through the conference and show them how good of a team we are. And you certainly saved your best season for last. You're currently averaging 12 points per game, shooting 60% from the field. That's first in the conference and eighth overall in the nation. Tell me, what's led you to such efficiency from the court this season? I would have to say um, shot selection. I'm I prefer to be more of a driver than a shooter, and so like when I get into the paint, I know I gotta make the better decision, and that's something that Coach Goodenough has really helped me develop over my four years here. Um, just being able to know that when I get to the paint, look who's open, check my surroundings, if I have an open shot, take it, but if not, I don't force something that's not there. What is your greatest strength on the team as a leader? Um, my primary goal, obviously, Coach Goodenough teaches us to shoot first, so that's our first objective. I wanna score first if we have an option. Um, secondly, I've always want to, I'm a creator. When people ask me, like, what's my favorite part of my, about my game, I say it's my ability to create. I love to create for other people and just kind of facilitate the offense, offense in that way. So I would much rather make the nice pass to the game winning layup than get the game winning layup itself. Um, that's just kind of the player I am. Um, as you can see by my assist numbers this year, it's just like I, so I love to share the ball and that's something that I've always been passionate about. What would it mean for your team and the school in general to win the conference tournament and clinch a first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament? You know, I think we have a lot to prove. Um, our women's soccer team made it to the conference tournament. They lost in the first round. And so we're currently competing to be the first team on campus to actually get um, a win this postseason. And so that's our goal. We're striving to get that uh, every day in practice and with each game. And so we know that we have a lot to prove in the tournament. And we've got a couple of bad memories from last season's. Um, the way it ended and we just want to make up for that and win the conference tournament and then win our first postseason game. This Saturday is senior day here against Incarnate Word. What's it going to be like playing in Moody for the last time in your career? It's pretty bittersweet. Um, I can't believe it's come this fast already but it's here and I'm excited. My family is going to come in town. My older brother is going to be here for the second time to see me play in Moody and so it's just it's going to be great to have my whole family here just surrounding me with love and my last time to play in Moody. The final week of the regular season is here for the women's basketball team for ACU. Two games on tap, one on the road, one at home, beginning Wednesday night against Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches. The Lady Jacks are now in second place, coming off just their second conference loss of the year. But, Coach, they are 15-0 in Johnson Coliseum. And at home in conference, they're allowing just 51 points. What makes them so good defensively? Uh, you know, you can expect a uh, 2-2-1 two, two, full court press back into a matchup zone. And uh, you, you have to be really smart offensively and read the matchup zone. Um, you know, we shot over 33s in our house the last time we played them. And our players, for the most part, did a great job reading and getting the ball to open players. You have to hit shots. I mean, they're going to sit in that, the matchup zone. Um, after they score, after dead balls, you know what they're going to be in, and you've got to read the defense and just knock your shots down. You're going to get open looks. 
Uh, and, you know, if we miss a three, sometimes it's a long rebound, and that's hard to transition mm -hmm. and defend that as well. And so it's a combination of some things here that, that didn't go well. But um, I, I think they're really tough. Um, defensively because of their matchup zone and they'll make adjustments throughout the course of the game if there's something that you're doing that's uh, you know breaking their zone down they'll make some adjustments and so uh, they're a really well coached defensive team. Yes after you celebrate uh, Sarah Saturday you play Incarnate Word for your final regular season game this game may or may not have postseason importance depending on Wednesday, but either way, what do you hope to see out of your team before they go to postseason play? Gosh, you know, I feel like we're on a really good roll right now. We're playing good on, on both ends of the floor. Um, we'd like to, you know, roll into Saturday on, you know, continuing this win streak. And Saturday we're playing Incarnate Word, who could mathematically still be fighting for a position in the tournament. And those teams are dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're fighting to have the best seed we can, can get into the tournament, which you would hope that would be a huge motivation for your team. But a team that, like, ha is in a situa situation where it's I have to win to extend their season, those teams are dangerous. And so, um, you know, we're, we're going to – talk about that scout after we get back from Nacogdoches, but our players need to be ready for that kind of a battle. And because we have such a great rivalry with Incarnate Word, yeah. you know, they'd love to come in here and mess up our season and our Sarah day <laughs> as well. And so, uh, you know, our, we just have to be ready to continue playing good basketball on Saturday. Yeah. Sarah had a day the last time you hosted in Carter Ward. She scored on a buzzer beater, didn't yes, she, she did. as I recall. She so did. that uh, that's going to be a big day celebrating Sarah. And again, one more win clinches a first round by in the Southland Conference Tournament. That could come Wednesday, can come Saturday. Why not win both? Absolutely. You're going to be there anyway. Might as well win it. For Max and for the coach, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Julie Good Enough Show.